It's a track that slowly builds energy, perseverance, and resolve. It's a Frankenstein song. Three completely different songs stitched together by a razor blade, and it's the only song in this legendary band's career where all five members created it together. By the time you hear its exhilarating crescendo, you feel as if you could conquer anything, even a devastating soul-crushing breakup, which is what this song did. It stopped one of the world's greatest bands from breaking up at their peak, mind you. If it weren't for this song, we would have missed out on six huge albums and 11 major hits. Coming up next, the story of a 70s classic that was actually never released as a single. It's one of their biggest songs, Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. If you can appreciate the relationship between a pencil and a cassette tape, you're gonna appreciate this channel. Make sure that you subscribe below right now and uh, do hit the bell so that you always get daily dose of classic rock and pop nostalgia, stories of the songs straight from the artist. Also, take a look at our Patreon for another catalog of content. You're gonna find more interviews, more videos there exclusive to you. That helps to support our channel. Also check out our merch, our Vintage Years collection. Helps us keep uh, the mission of, of keeping the music alive. One of the greatest albums of all time, no doubt about it, is Rumors. Every track is flawless. Well, instead of breaking the album down as we've done in the past with so many other classics like Van Halen 1984 and Def Leppard Hysteria and, and Guns N' Roses Appetite for Destruction, I decided to come at Rumors track by track with a video for each of those tracks. So here you go. In 1976, uh, the five members of Fleetwood Mac were experiencing the hurt uh, and despair of a failed relationship. The acrimony should have broken up uh, the band permanently. It would have with any other band. I mean, the McVees, John and Christine were dissolving their marriage. And the long-term relationship between Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham was broken beyond repair. Even Mick Fleetwood was going through a divorce with his first wife, Jenny Boyd after he'd found out that she'd been carrying on a secret affair with co-lead guitarist Bob Weston. The strain on the band was absolutely overwhelming, and uh, Fleetwood Mac was this close to imploding and never making it to their landmark album, Rumors. Um, like I said, most bands would not have made it. Mick threatened to quit his own band because uh, the emotional stress became too much to bear. Now, to save Mick, band got rid of Weston and brought in Buckingham and Nix. Amazingly, Fleetwood Mac was able to hang on, relying on the one thing that they all lived for and the one thing that united them really in the first place, their music. The music was the chain that kept them together. The chain was also the title of the only song from the Rumors album where all five band members were involved in his composition. Ironic. Uh, the chain was aptly named because the song was structured by a combination of sections from older songs that were rejected by a record label. Uh, included uh, discarded solo material by uh, Stevie, also Christine and Lindsay. The first link of the chain began with a bass riff in the instrumental bridge of Christine's unreleased track, Butter Cookie, Keep Me There which uh, was later made available on uh, the expanded edition of Rumors. Came out a few years ago. The bass line was created by bassist and co-founder John McVie. Uh, before adding it to Christine's song, he had aspirations of using the riff for a different song. The band went back to McVie's uh, bass progression as the foundation for the chain and then added the outro of Keep Me There uh, that Mick Fleetwood and John McVie collaborated on. Now, everyone loved the bass riff on the bridge and the exciting breakdown, but they had trouble arranging uh, the beginning of the song, apparently. So actually what they did is they worked backwards. Now to complete the chain, Lindsey Buckingham resurrected the intro from Lola My Love, uh, that was a duet that he recorded with Stevie that was originally released on uh, their self-titled LP from 1973. 
Lindsay slightly uh, altered the tempo from Lola My Love uh, for the intro of the chain, and uh, he used mixed kick drum as a simple metronome to keep time. Given the fragmented nature of the chain, the song was inevitably constructed by uh, the old school process involving splicing reel-to-reel -reel tapes with a razor blade. Uh, actually, when Lindsey Buckingham spoke of uh, cutting the record, he wasn't using a figure of speech. He literally meant that he and uh, the production team had to cut the song. Frankly, uh, the entire Rumors album was pieced together by overdubbing individual instruments since the band was in such a fragile emotional state. They were in no position to record uh, their individual parts together uh, at the same time, unfortunately. Uh, actually, the only instance of two instruments being recorded in unison on the LP occurs on the chain when the Fleetwood drums and uh, the Buckingham guitar solo were performed together. <music> Lindsay was the architect behind the arrangement for the chain, lining up uh, all those bits and pieces from other songs that were laid down uh, on separate tapes. There's no doubt about the fact, it's just a fact, that Lindsey Buckingham is one of the greatest guitarists ever. One of the greatest to pick up a guitar, period. Over the years, uh, it's happened so many times in interviews where artists just uh, tell me how much they love Lindsey and what an influence he is and how great he is. I think Lindsey is underrated as one of the great rock guitarists. I mean, he, he blended finger picking with rock and roll better than anybody ever had. Um, and really, really took it a, another step up. And I think he brought a lot to Stevie's stuff. I think he was a major force in commercializing Stevie's melodies, which tend to be very stream of consciousness. And he sort of roped her in, found where the hook was and turned it into a thing. Once Lindsay's arrangement was made, the band needed the lyrics. Now, as we go into how the lyrics came about, uh, before we do that, I want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses that I always wear. When you go to Zenny.com, you can shop according to the shape of your face. You can ensure uh, that you always have a variety of really spectacular and distinctive eyewear that will look great on you uh, to give you that edge. Check it out today at Zenny.com. So speaking of the lyrics, uh, Mick Fleetwood vividly remembers Stevie walking in the studio one day, informing everybody that she had written some words that uh, might be a good fit for that thing that you were doing in the studio the other day. That thing that Stevie was referring to was the song that became the chain. Uh, Stevie handed over uh, a lyric sheet with words that were cries of anger and loneliness and betrayal. It's pretty much what Rumors is all about. Listen to the wind blow, down comes the night. Running in the shadows, damn your love, damn your lies. Shadows, damn your love, damn your lies. Break the silence, damn the dark, damn the light. Pretty deep stuff there. Shadows, damn your love, damn your lies. Christine worked with Stevie to tweak the first section of the track's vocal and the song was ready to record from there. Ultimately, the chain and the other chin tracks that were on Rumors were what Mick called a band thing because each member had an individual style that when mixed together uh, made the distinctive sound of Fleetwood Mac. Now, the chain has three profound parts that uh, make the song so powerful. There's John McVie's low bass line, the harmony of the three co-lead vocalists, Stevie, Christine, and Lindsay, just beautiful together uh, on the main verse and chorus. And what an incredible intro. In the chain's thrilling climax, it sounds as if all three singers are feeling uh, the same 
stark emotions and release the pent-up frustration caused by all their failed relationships uh, with this uh, roar of intense transparency. You really can't say enough about Ken Calais and uh, Richard Daschet without uh, their patience, their resourcefulness, and their expert technique. I mean, rumors would never have been made. I mean, how those two managed to navigate through all that doom and gloom over months of recording sessions without a, a master's degree in psychiatry is really remarkable. Rumors is an epic achievement that was much more than a record album. It was a tragic love story that miraculously ended happily ever after, at least at that time. It's no secret that as listeners, we all love drama. Well, I don't believe any band has been able to capture that uh, relationship drama on a record quite like the Mac since they released Rumors. Ultimately, the agony of heartbreak and finishing with a renewal of strength to overcome resulted in an opulent uh, classic that inspired listeners all around the world, you know, who needed something to latch onto to heal their pain. Rumors, that's why that sold nearly 50 million copies. It's one of the biggest selling albums of all time. It was also one of the finest pieces of artistic expression of the rock era, and that is a testament to the chain that kept the band together. As Mick wrote in his memoir from uh, 2015, we refuse to let our feelings derail our commitment to the music, no matter how complicated or intertwined they became. It was hard to do, but no matter what, we played through the hurt. Fleetwood Mac forged ahead, holding on tightly to the resilience of their united composition. And they vowed to never break the chain, never break the chain. Never break, never break the chain. Now, the chain was not a hit uh, during Rumor's uh, phenomenal 31-week run on the Billboard album chart, but it gained popularity from a lot of heavy use in pop culture all over the world, especially in the UK, where nearly 1.5 million copies of that single have been sold, compared to around 800,000 in America. The instrumental section of the song was selected as the theme music for the BBC and Channel 4 TV's coverage of Formula One. McVie's bass riff was used by the BBC for the Grand Prix uh, theme music for a lot of years. Now, the chain was, uh, it's been used in pop culture a lot. It was used in an episode of Glee called Rumors in 2011, honoring the album and the band. Uh, it was placed in the TV series Heroes in 2009, The Americans in 2015, and included in two memorable scenes in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, which was, to me, one of the highlights of the film overall. Growing up, Ever since I can remember, I have, uh, I've known Fleetwood Mac rumors. My parents played it all the time on our family stereo in the front room, hardly left the turntable, really. I know each track intimately, and I always love side one, you know, Dreams, Don't Stop, uh, Go Your Own Way. Those, of course, were the hit songs that were more accessible and played them all the time. It wasn't until I was in my 20s and the Mac came back together to record the brilliant life set to dance in 97 that I realized the genius of the chain. I remember the day I bought the dance and I heard him start it off with the chain. It dawned on me that this song was really the glue of rumors. It started side two, but it held the, the two sides together. After really listening and savoring the dance, listening to all the tracks and you know so many wonderful versions of the, the classics uh, of their, their catalog, including Silver Springs. 
I listened to rumors of a whole new set of ears, and I reread all the stories of the album and the songs, and they deepened severely for me. I was now hearing these songs after having lived life a little bit, you know? I just had, I'd had some experiences, some challenges, trials, conflicts, failures, and heartbreak. And the Mac fortified my existence like never before. Even though I knew all of their songs from a very young age, the rediscovery was quite an eye-opening or ear-opening and heart-wrenching experience. And since then, they've become uh, really a cornerstone of the music that has saved my sanity and motivated my progression throughout life. Oh, damn you love, damn you life. Not many bands can rise to those lofty heights in our lives. The Chain has since become a song that seems to organize my thoughts, my patterns, when I become disjointed. It really is the chain that links with, you know, my expectations with my reality. Damn the dark. Now, in 2018, the chain was broken, unfortunately, when band management fired Lindsey Buckingham from Fleetwood Mac. There are, of course, several stories there. Despite the bitter disruption, Fleetwood Mac once again battled onward and moved ahead without their valuable bandmate. The band continued to tour by filling in uh, the missing link with uh, Neil Finn and Mike Campbell, two incredible uh, musicians. They handled Lindsey's vocal parts for their live shows and guitar parts. Uh, their first public appearance with the new lineup was on an episode of The Ellen Show, and there's a ring reason I'm bringing this up. Can you imagine what the first song is that they performed? It was The Chain. The Chain was uh, covered by the supergroup of The High Women, featuring uh, Natalie Hemby, uh, Brandi Carlisle, Maren Morris, and Amanda Shires for the 2019 movie The Kitchen. Amy Lee and Evanescence remade the tune for Xbox's Gears of War 5. The Evanescence version has, uh, of course, heavier guitar licks and a string session and was released as a digital single in late 2019. I like both those versions. There have been a lot of changes throughout the years in Fleetwood Mac, from Peter Green to Stevie and Lindsay coming aboard. Some music was done without certain members, and there's the version with Campbell and Finn. But for me and many of you, the group that recorded Rumors will always be the original lineup. They persevered and created a masterpiece, and you can never break that chain. Leave us a comment about the Mac, Fleetwood Mac. What are your favorite tracks from Rumors? What are your memories of hearing this incredible album and this amazing song? I uh, would love to know in the comments uh, your thoughts on Fleetwood Mac overall. If you like our content, make sure to subscribe below. Click the bell so that you never miss out on our videos. We'd love to have you as part of our Patreon. You can check that out below. and We have merch there as well. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Talk soon.